In the summer of 1940, Russell Skinner of Palmyra, Pennsylvania was fishing on the Marguerite River in Nova Scotia. He was fishing a marabou streamer, which at the time was pretty new, when he came across a run of sea trout where he was hooking a fish on pretty much every cast. So was this a case of being at the right place at the right time, or was this fly something special? So he gives one of these flies to one of the local kids who'd never caught a fish on a fly. In fact, he didn't even have a fly rod. He had an eight foot steel rod, a bait casting reel, and some cutty hunk line. So somehow this kid manages to use this as a fly rod and comes back with a pretty big fish. And there begins the start of this fly's popularity. Now Skinner was an occasional writer for Pennsylvania Angler Magazine, and he wrote an article about the Marabou Streamer in the May 1942 issue. He talks a little about the history of it, which there wasn't really much known because at the time the bucktail was pretty much the predominant streamer. But it's a really cool article in that the tips and tactics he talks about are still relevant exactly 80 years later. So this was the earliest reference I could find to this pattern, so it leads me to believe that this might be the first time that it showed up in print. Joseph Bates does talk about it, and J. Edson Leonard mention it in their books, but those were written in the 1950s. Now, Mike Valla does have a beautiful one in his classic streamer fly box, which is pretty much what I use as a reference for the one I'm about to tie today. But the materials are pretty simple. Just a little bit of black marabou, some peacock hurl for a topping, flat mylar tinsel for a body, and then a little bit of red hackle for a throat. Now, before I get into the tie, I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I need to get out to the farm more often and hopefully get in a couple extra fishing days. And a lot of y'all said, hey, I'd love to see some footage of you fishing using some of the patterns you tie here. So I'm thinking, okay, I can try. I was out at the farm this past weekend. I got a couple hours to get out on the Savage, so I took the GoPro with me. And I was using the Sulphur Dunn that I tied for the channel last week. And it was a pretty good day. There were a lot of midges in the air, but by mid-morning, I did see plenty of sulfurs out. And I did hook this big guy on a size 14, but oh boy, I was using some pretty light tippet with my seven and a half foot three weight. And I'll put a little bit of that footage at the end, so make sure you watch all the way through if you wanna see if I actually landed this guy. But before that, let's tie this classic streamer. So there's one in the vise, a marabou black. Pretty cool pattern, not really that hard to tie, but a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna tie this on a size six, this is also a 6X long streamer hook. I'm looking at the package, it's a Daiichi 2340 if you care about those things. If not, just get you a long hook, long streamer hook. And I wanna use some black thread. I'm gonna catch it in up front. I'm not gonna take it all the way back just yet because I'm gonna catch in my flat silver tinsel up front. This is a Mylar silver one side, gold on the other. We want a silver body, so catch it in with the silver side toward the hook, okay? And my goal here is just to keep this along the top of the hook without it spinning around. It'll help keep my underbody flat, so just go ahead and take it all the way to the back. Okay, I think that's about how far I want, so let's go ahead and take the thread back up front. And I forgot to mention, a tail on this guy is optional. If you wanted to do the tail, you'd do it before you caught in that body. But let's just go ahead and wrap this up. And a couple of tips for wrapping this. Um, I don't try to overlap them. I would rather them get flat and maybe I have a little gap in between a couple of the wraps, but it does keep them flat and I think it, it's gonna look better. So it's a good trade off. So go ahead and wrap your body as, as smooth as you can get it all the way up front. Okay, now when you get it up front, go ahead and catch it off with a couple of wraps up here. And if you'll notice, I got a slight gap right there, but the body's pretty smooth, pretty flat, so I'm happy enough with it. I'm gonna do a couple of extra wraps, and a lot of folks will do this. They'll fold it back over. I don't know how necessary this is, but got a couple extra wraps. Now you just snip this off right here. And in theory, that makes it less likely to unravel on you. Don't think it's likely gonna unravel anyway, but you never know. So let's put our thread back just a little bit and grab some red hackle feathers. Now one tip I like to do on, on the throat if I'm gonna do it, um, this is my strung saddle hackle. You can always just take several of the barbs from one of the feathers, 
but there's also those little short feathers on the side that you really don't use for anything else. Sometimes I will just grab one of those, the whole feather, and grab the tip, and I'm gonna catch it in, and I'm not necessarily worried how I orient it, but if you can get it, you know, concave side away from the hook, you might be able to get a good looking throat with this right here. Let's just adjust our length. That's gonna be a little bit too long, I think, right there. Okay, I think that's a fine throat. Let's go ahead and trim the excess up front. A few wraps to bury this. Now let's take a tuft, a medium, small to medium sized tuft of black marabou right here. And according to the one in, in Vala's book, it was a good bit longer than the tail. I'm not gonna make it way longer, like way back there, because I think it would just be more likely to, you know, foul around the hook bend. So we'll go just a little bit longer, how about right there? And if you want to, you can lick your fingers and pull this out. It might make it just a little easier to work with. I didn't do that. Let's see if we're gonna be okay. Yeah, I think we're fine. That's not too much. Let's take a few extra wraps going forward here to just really lock this tuft of marabou in. Oop, I'm starting to spin that red one around. I didn't really want to do that, so let's pull that back down. Okay, that'll be fine right there. Now I'll snip this excess right here and a few extra wraps to smooth this area out. And I'm not really liking that red. It's, it is twisting around on me, you know, but ah, we're gonna be fine. Okay, so next thing, some peacock curl. And I'm gonna take three strands. Just kind of snip them off straight right here. And maybe a little bit longer than that marabou because if you want, we can put a little curve in them in just a second. So two or three good wraps right here. They're off the top right now, that's gonna be fine. And either break or snip these right here. Let's do a few extra wraps to just lock these guys in. And so one tip you can do with these peacock hurl strands, just grab the, the hurl but not the marabou and put your bodkin or your scissors underneath it and then just kind of pull up with your thumb right there and you'll get that little bend. He'll create a little bit of a bend there, which yeah, it, sometimes it gives it a nicer look, but I don't think it's all that big of a deal. So really, you can finish this head and call it done, but if you do have any jungle cock eyes, you know, it looks pretty good with them. So let's go ahead and, and put a couple of small ones on here, maybe a third of the way back the body. That's kind of the size I'm thinking right there. So that would look okay right there. So the same thing on this side. Okay, check my position. I think they're going to be fine. Let's snip the excess right here. And just clean up your head. It's a streamer, so don't be afraid to put a, a good size head on here. All right, I could even go a little bit bigger of a head than that, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and put some head cement on it. Okay, let's take a look, see if we have any cleanup. Now, one thing to keep in mind, don't worry if you think this marabou is covering your uh, body too much. It's really, this thing is going to have so much movement and fluffing through the water, you're definitely gonna see that silver body. Don't worry that you might be covering too much of that up. It's gonna be there and it's gonna be very prominent. So I think I'm fine with this one. I'm not gonna worry about any cleanup. I'm gonna put some head cement on it and call it done. So that's it, everybody. Stick around if you wanna see a couple minutes of footage from my last trip out on the Savage River. All right, good morning, everybody. I am at the Savage River. I'm parked at the first bridge just past the wood mill. About to head out and fish this stretch, wading it upstream. Gonna head on down to the water, just upstream of the first bridge, closest to the, the wood yard. Got a little bushwhacking to do here.
And here we go. Not seeing a whole lot of bugs just yet, but it's rainy. Yeah, I see a few of them up there. All right, let's get in position and get going. I'm seeing a few bugs on the water. I'm not as big as this sulfur I'm fishing, but there is a sulfur hatch going on right now, this time of year, maybe not this minute, but the fish are used to seeing them. So it's, it's not a bad tactic to start. I'm slowly working my way in toward the faster water. I see a fish rising up there. So we'll go after him in just a second. Well, I just saw one, one rise on the surface. Not sure what they're eating, but we'll see if we can trick him into this sulfur. So I'm not getting too greedy and going all the way in yet. I want to fish the water between here and there first. So I'm slowly kind of inching my way in there. There we go, there we go. Nice fish. That was the guy that was feeding. All right, don't go down there, buddy. Don't go down too far. It's a good size wild brown here for the Savage River. So let me get directly downstream of him. He's gonna make a run on me, I know it. And I'm not gonna be able to muscle him. Come on, buddy. Come on. Nope, almost. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's get this hook out of this guy. It's a big buck. Look at that. Almost got the under jaw right there. That is a nice size wild brown here on the savage let's get him back in there make sure he doesn't don't hook him again there you go big guy so that was a pretty fun morning i did end up getting one more fish on the sulfur wasn't as big as that one but he was still a pretty decent fish but then i had to head back to the farm and do some bush hogging so if you haven't seen the version of that sulfur done i was using it's a video on your screen right now. It's a pretty simple tie, but anytime you've got a sulfur hatch going on, this thing could be a champ. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. See you in a couple of days.